I'm going to invite a young man up. He's a graduate of Vector Academy, part of the Tuesday Night Stitch Crew. He's a 20-something, and uh, welcome Caleb Clifton. He's going to come share a spoken word this morning. He's going to encourage you. Come on, encourage Caleb. Come on. That's 6 in the morning. I am a stronger man. Through Christ, I am born again, following his will for my life, holding loosely to my possessions and plans, for he's given it all and created me the way I am. I deny myself and daily take up my cross. I lay my life down, no matter the cost. If I lose my life for Christ's sake, it's not actually a loss. When wholeheartedly following the Lord, I can receive the greatest blessings and rewards, grace overflowing and love from the King. Because of this, his praises we sing, because he paid for it all. When we make the mistakes that we constantly make, we stumble, but we don't have to fall. He laid down his life and hung in that tree. We can partake in redemption and be set free, reborn, revived, remade, and redeemed. The righteous live by faith, and we're made righteous by the Son through the work he has done. He justifies. He glorifies. He works in our lives so that we may be sanctified. He stood on the stand before the judge and was tried for our guilt, lust, greed, resentment, and pride. For by our sins, we weren't just sick. We had died. He picks us up, raising us to new life. Now we fight for one name. To him alone do we bring our guilt and our shame. Have faith and assurance the battle is won. Give thanks to the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Jesus is he who stepped into our mess. The word made flesh, the leader we pursue. He makes us new. From him flows everything that is good and true. He was there when it all began. He is the perfect, blessed, stronger man. And so now I strive to become the man God created me to be. Through the work he has done, through his one and only son, the one who ransomed me. I'm a hardworking man, full of integrity, grateful and satisfied he's already given me plenty. I run hard with endurance, there will be trials and pain, of this I have assurance. But with no pain, is there any gain? But greater yet is the hope I have in him. If I share in his sufferings, how much more will I share in his blessings? I run after wisdom as to not be a fool. I'm an honest partaker, I play by the rules. I'm a man of my word and Jesus is my aim. If I compete, I complete, not to bring myself fame, but for the glory of his everlasting name. I'm an adopted son of God, made alive by the king. I study his word. It equips me for every good thing. God has broken my chains and given me everything. I'm a disciplined, determined disciple, despite any persecution or pain. Kill the dragon. We are not of demonic domain. Win the girl, remaining pure and devoted to only one woman, by protecting, providing, leading, and loving, following the example Christ set before us. And Christ is where I put all of my trust. I will stand to the end to work hard and defend. Through the terrifying shadows and agonizing nights, I will put on the armor and stand in the light. I will pick up the sword and fight the good fight. I will stand for him alone. I will stand for the Lord. I'm a forgiven child of the Father, full of joy, strength, compassion, and valor. I'm a uniquely crafted work of his hand. I am a stronger man. Ah, isn't that good? Woo! You riff that off at six in the morning in front of 400 dudes. Well done, Caleb. Well done. Ah, that's awesome. Well, hey, uh, good morning. Anybody here for the first time, by the way? Anyone, this is their first Stronger Men? I've got a couple of, got a couple of hands going up. Right on. Welcome, man. Good to have you. Good to have you guys. Uh, well, it's the last one. So glad you made it. Until September, we'll be back. So conference coming up two weeks. Super pumped for that. Here's where we're going this morning. Last month, um, we talked about three enemies of the harvest, laziness, hardness, deceitfulness. And I was looking at the final passages in chapters 9, 10, and, uh, 9, 10 11, and 12 of the farmer book. Don't know if you've, you've dug into that one yet. Uh, we had soldier, January, February, March. Farmer, April, May, June. So this the last uh, month we're focusing on the farmer provider uh, identity as men. And uh, good news to share. Athlete went to the printer on Monday. And w- <clears throat> so it will be in hand at the conference. It will be here. 
uh, fresh copies to pick up, which, which I encourage you to grab for July, August, and September, and uh, then working on the fourth and final one of the series, Sun. Uh, that will be, uh, Lord willing, the plan is to have it in your hands at the October Stronger Men in the fall for October, November, December, and that will be 120,000 words written in 12 months, which I'm feeling like I should not necessarily do next year, but, <clears throat> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, dive into this one. I, I realized, so three enemies, but we've got more than that, fellas. <laughs> and I was like, okay, five more, five more enemies of the harvest of stronger men. So here we go. Stronger men like farmers pay attention to the condition of their field, right? We're, we're providers with a field to work. And there's different fields, the field of your family, the field of your job. But obviously, we, we, it starts right here for men, the field of their heart. How's the soil of your heart? How's the field? How's the condition of your soul? And so the enemies we're looking at this morning in many ways are subtle, right? Subtle. And I talked about that the subtleties become the suddenlies, right? A lot lot of guys will go, suddenly, you know, crap hits the fan in their life or or something goes sideways. How did I get here? And oftentimes, it's not actually uh, uh, suddenly, it's, it's the subtle neglect that becomes sudden defeat. How many remember hear, hearing me say something like that last month? Subtle neglect becomes sudden defeat. And so these are, I'm just, these are common, universal. Not only have I seen these, experienced these, Jesus talks about these, uh, these subtle enemies for men. And as we head into summer, this is part of my warning and encouragement and challenge to you is to be on the lookout, look out and be on the guard for the condition of your own soul from these enemies. Let's read Matthew 13. Jesus telling the parable of the sower or the four soils. We've only got four passages real quick. Pull out some enemies. And then we'll talk conference stuff a little bit at the end before we blast out this morning. Sound good? You guys awake? A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Here's the first enemy this morning I want to talk about, the enemy of distraction. How many ever heard a man talk about a time period in their life where they were distracted. I was thinking about, I was thinking about this this morning that I've heard men in their, in their 40s or 50s or 60s talk about when they were in their 20s that during their 20s they were distracted. And I've heard men in their 50s and 60s talk about how they were distracted in their 40s. All right? And, and, and anybody, anybody heard anything like that? Anybody experienced anything like that? Man, I went through a period of my life where I was distracted. I wasn't focused on the right things. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't paying attention to the condition of my field, the condition of my soul. I, I wasn't paying attention to God. I wasn't paying attention, and it hit me. Think about it. Dude, you and I can get distracted so easily. We can not only get distracted so easily. How amazing is it, fellas, that we can be distracted for an entire decade? I, uh, come on, I hear, I've heard it a lot. I've seen it a lot. And the reality is, distractions are demonic. Now, what, now I'll, here's how I get to the word distraction. I'm, I'm looking at of two of the four soils, the path and the thorns. Because Jesus describes and tells what the, what the, what the parable is about. And, and the seed that is sown on the path, it never sinks in. It never goes in. 
And, and it says the birds come and take that seed and pull it away. And then Jesus tells us what the birds are. It's Satan, the evil one, or demonic forces pull that seed away. They take that seed away so it can't sink in to the soil of a man's heart and change his life. There's the path, there's the rocky soil, there's the thorns, and there's the good soil. Those are the four soils. But when men aren't paying attention, aren't thinking about what they're hearing, it's all just Charlie Brown's teacher voice. And you're in danger, and I'm in danger, of that happening this morning in this room. There are men who have been among us this season of stronger men who are no longer among us Distraction. Not paying attention. Here's what I want to tell us as men. And, I, it's a, and I'll put it in the form of a question. How do you hang on to what you hear? How do you hang on to the good seed that is scattered in your life? Whether you hear it on a Wednesday morning or on a a weekend at church or in, and you're reading it or hearing it, how are you taking in the seed of God's word that has the life-changing, transforming power to produce fruit in and through your life? How are you taking it in? And when men are distracted, they're not paying attention. They don't know what's going on. It doesn't sink in. They don't get it. They don't think about it. They never stop, slow down, contemplate it, in one ear, out the other, and the future condition of the harvest of that man is predictable. And it's barren. Distraction can lead to barrenness. With the thorns, Jesus is specific. In Luke, Matthew and Luke, two places you find the parable of the sower, in Luke's version, he's very specific in saying that the seed that grows up, the, the, that grows up among the thorns what are the thorns? The thorns are worries, riches, and pleasures. Worries of this life, riches, and pleasures. And I'm calling those distractions. And what they do, he's specific in Luke, they keep the plant from maturing. So the, the thorns choke it out because it never grows Strong. It doesn't grow up. It gets choked out. It gets constricted. Worries, riches, and pleasures. And men battle these distractions constantly. Worries, riches, and pleasures distract you from what is priority, will keep you from maturing. And if, they, and if you get kept from maturing, you get choked out. That's what happens to your faith when we're distracted. So it takes intentionality and energy to focus. You're, ex you're exuding right now energy to focus on the words that I'm saying. At 6 in the morning, you need a cup of coffee. I'm going to listen to this guy talk. I'm going to, you know. <laughs> you're doing a workout of a certain kind, <laughs> right? So here, here, here. What's your plan to fight distractions? How will you stay focused and what you're focusing on? So here's a, here's a question for you. What distracts you from your priorities or what distracts you from God's word sinking in to your mind and your heart? That's the transformative seed. Jesus wants to plant that in your heart and produce fruit. What distracts you? What, what, what is the threat for you even heading into this summer? Okay, there's going to be no more. So 
What distracts you? Number one. Number two, enemy, shallowness. Now here's, here's another one, fellas, we're really good at. If you always put on a front, you'll always stay on the surface. And men can put on a front. This is the rocky soil. Not, right? not, not much soil, rocky. It's shallow, so there's no root. So my, my encouragement to us, my exhortation, here's a, a question. Who do you get real with when do you go deep? Sometimes guys play it safe, avoid, this is why men notoriously avoid accountability, avoid authenticity, avoid vulnerability, don't go there, don't talk about it, don't get deep. Because they think that's dangerous and I'm telling you, shallowness is dangerous. You're afraid to go deep. I'm telling you, you ought to be afraid to stay shallow. You ought to be afraid to stay shallow because, friends, here's what we know. The sun's going to come out. The heat's going to go up. And here's what happens. The, the, receive it with joy. Oh, yeah. Woo. You, know, you can show up here or, 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 or lean into the things of God. Receive it. Have the appearance of grabbing onto it. Shallowness does not Pass the tests that come. Tests are trials, heat, and when it gets hard, the shallow fall away. When it gets hot and when it gets hard, the shallow fall away. They wilt under the heat. The only way to avoid that is to dig deep. To go deep, you got to dig. You got to dig in. So, right, I mean, are, are, are we as men not notorious for being able to be shallow? Men don't always do a good job of knowing or identifying what's really going on. And as brothers, as men, we need to learn how and stay at it, drawing others out, helping others dig in and dig deep. Draw your brother out. Before you jump in and tell your story, ask another question. Help that brother dig another shovel down. Go a little bit deeper. Wait, don't just sit there and start yapping your lips. Ask another question. Ask another question. Listen, pray. Right? You're drawing out what's, what's really down in there. Go a little deeper. How many know digging deeper will save lives? So beware. Beware. If you always put on a front, you'll always stay on the surface. And if you stay on the surface, when it gets hard, you'll fall away. You won't pass the test. So who are you real with? When do you go deep? Number three, this is John 15. Jesus said this, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Jesus talking to his disciples. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. 
If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do how much? Nothing. Nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. That doesn't sound good. Anybody done any pruning this spring? Anybody? Yeah? <laughs> Vine and branches, remain in me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. What's, what's the enemy? Disconnection. Disconnection. Fellas, don't disconnect. Don't drift. Stay connected. Apart from vital connection with Jesus, you can do nothing in terms of bearing the fruit that gives life to your own soul and to those God has given you. There'll be no harvest. There'll be no good fruit. Men are notorious drifters. We go for a while. Maybe it's because we get distracted. We stay shallow, then we disconnect. So my encouragement to you, simple, we'll keep rolling here, don't disconnect. Where, where are your connect points? With the Lord, with other men, with his word. How will you stay connected to Jesus this summer? What's that look like? How do you strengthen that? How do you fortify that? Here's, here's, a, here's a question. What are the signs for you? See how well you know yourself. Think about this. What are the signs that you're drifting? What, be, what begins to show up or not show up in your life when you're drifting from the Lord? from the truth, from the path, okay? Disconnection. What are the signs that you're drifting? How will you guard against that? How will you fight against disconnection, unplugging? Because that starts that process of, of drying out. James 5, be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. So get ready. We're going to play the long game. Or maybe it's the short game. We don't know. He's coming. Be patient. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. Now, James is writing to brothers who are suffering, who are in hard times and challenging times. He's saying, be patient until the Lord's coming. And then he, and then he uses our analogy, our metaphor. Look at the farmer. Look at how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. Then he says, you too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. And then he says this. I love this. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Now watch this. This is, this, this, you, you fellas are so easy. You're so easy. You're suckers. You're so easy. We, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Let's talk about the enemy of frustration. Frustration. Why do I say that? Here's the deal. How many of you know when you have to wait, you get frustrated? You are, we are so impatient, naturally impatient. Patience is the fruit of the Spirit, which means patience is supernatural. Impatience is what's natural. What happens in times of impatience. Men notoriously get frustrated and that frustration or anger, you guys, what? How, how many dads in the room? How many dads in the room? Dads in the room, see your hands. Dads, okay. How many, tell me this. You dads have ever sent your children out to pull weeds? <laughs> you send your children out to pull weeds, okay? <laughs> now, now watch this. Tell me, when... When the frustration rises, what comes along with it? You ever seen frustration lead to fighting? You ever see the frustration lead to a breakdown in, in, in communication? 
You ever see frustration lead to infighting? How many of you dads, that bickering and fighting is the best sound in the world? <laughs> no. Watch how, this, watch how this works. Tell me this is not the case. Re- read in the mail, right? Look, you as a dad go out there, you hear your children getting frustrated, impatient. It's hot. It's hard. They get frustrated and they begin to bicker and they begin to grumble and they begin to complain and they begin to fight, which triggers your frustration. Now, God's a perfect father. I'm not a perfect father. No, but here's the deal. You and I, come on, as men, we are tempted to get frustrated. Here's a question. Men are not naturally good at processing their frustrations in a mature way. But a stronger man can hold, get a hold of his heart, his mind, and his tongue. A stronger man, because here's the deal. Patience, listen, patience is not passivity. Patience is incredible activity on the inside. Patience is not passivity. Patience is very active. It's internal self-control. Patience, long-suffering. We get weary. We get tired. Think about how, now, because here, here's the deal. Real practical. Real practical. Husbands in this room, fathers in this room, You get impatient this summer, you get frustrated this summer, you grumble this summer, you just have a grumpy attitude, and you can wreck your family's summer. How many know that's a fact? Your attitude, your response in a situation when things aren't going the way you think it should go, when it should go there, when things aren't unfolding on the timetable that you'd prefer, you get frustrated and you grumble. And James is very specific. Be patient. Don't grumble. Grumbling, grumbling is a sign of ungratefulness and greed. I don't have time to go in to, to make the connections for you on that. I'm just telling you. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you one. I'll do it. All right. Hey. You ever, you, ever, you ever hear of the Israelites wandering in the desert? You, you, ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever hear about them saying, I want to go back to Egypt. Remember, man, we had it so good back there in slavery. Remember the meat pots we used to sit by in Egypt? And they grumbled and they complained in the desert, I'm tired, it's hot, are we there yet? <laughs> and when they would grumble against the Lord or against Moses, why'd you bring us out here, you brought us out here to die? And God is raining bread and meat from heaven every day. And they're grumbling. And it led them to hoard more on the day the Lord said, trust me, gather double on this day. Don't go out on this, on this day. You rest. Don't go out. Gather double. If you try to go out, it'll spoil. It won't be there. No, they tried, to, they tried to hoard. They didn't trust the Lord. They were greedy and they were ungrateful. And the same is present in our hearts, and it comes up when we get impatient and when we're frustrated. Don't let your frustration spill over into infighting. That's classic immaturity. It's what your kids do that as a dad drives you nuts that you come alongside and you disciple their hearts. And that's what the father wants to disciple us in, fellas. When your kids get frustrated, they start bickering and fighting, and dad does not love that sound. Men always need to mature in how they process their frustrations. A stronger man can get a hold of his heart, mind, and tongue. Patience isn't passivity. Entrust the outcome to the Lord and stay at it, waiting for him to bring the breakthrough, waiting for him to bring the change. And guard against. So what are you most likely to complain about? 
what are you most likely to complain? Oh, this is a fun morning. Oh, this is so fun. This is gonna, I gotta, I gotta beat you up for three months worth. June, July, and August. Just write this down. We'll send these notes out, right? It's like, okay, Lord, okay. How many of you love to get beat up? How many, not, right? Get, into, get beat into shape. Come on, you know what I mean? Just ham, hammer, hammer on the dudes. Let's go. This is, I'm telling you, the, the distraction, shallowness, disconnection, frustration. Here we go, last one. Last one. Luke 10 says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Interesting. That last line got my attention even just last night. He says, the harvest is plentiful. Workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his field. And then Jesus says, go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. I was like, dang. Dang. That is not every guy's favorite verse. But notice, the enemy I'm going to talk about is not the wolves. The enemy is the worker shortage. And it comes in the form of neglect. Neglecting the real harvest, which is people. As men, we're called to pursue our wives, our families, the people God has placed around us, the relationships. The the harvest is people. The harvest is more men. The harvest are the people God's put in our lives. It's our wives, our, our children, our sons and daughters, our grandsons and granddaughters, right? That, that's the harvest. So the, 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 the subtle enemy is not the wolves, it's the neglect of the harvest. Don't neglect the harvest. Now, I thought a little more uh, about it, and I will say this. On, On one hand, we're absolutely ordinary lambs. And that's encouraging. Because that's that's any man, every man. Jesus says, go, I'm sending you. Harvest is plentiful, workers are few. But I'll also tell you, these are no ordinary lambs. Did you know that? These are not ordinary lambs. Go, I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. When the disciples came back, how'd they come back? You read a few verses later. They came back rejoicing. They came back excited. Why? Because these lambs, even the demons submit to these lambs. Woo, that ain't no ordinary lamb. Oh, you're an ordinary lamb in some ways, but you're not an ordinary lamb in other ways because even the demons submit to those who go out in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and Jesus says, don't rejoice that the demons submit. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus is saying, gentlemen, listen, the harvest is life. Souls, men, women, children. And the enemy is not the wolves, but it's the workers who neglect to go into the harvest field. So all I'm saying to myself, to you, is as we live our lives, we are aware of the danger of these enemies, of distraction, of shallowness, of disconnection, of frustration, and of neglect. How many you think those are real enemies? How many you know 
Those are real enemies that can sideline you, that can shipwreck your faith, your family's health, the condition of your field, the condition of your fruit, the condition of your harvest. And those are things that we face every day, and those are things you, you, we will be battling until the Lord comes. But you can... I'm, I'm, I'm challenging myself not to, to be vigilant every day, let alone this month, let alone this summer, let alone the decade you're in, bro. And that wow, we can go. How we can go and be essentially ineffective sidelined. So don't neglect the real harvest. In other words, where is God calling you to invest, to feed, to cultivate, to nurture? Show up with the people God has given you. Show up with the people. This summer, show up. How are you going to show up with the people God's given you? What are the relationships God's calling you to build this summer? How will you do that? What are the relationships? Pay attention. What are the relationships God's calling you to, to, to feed, to invest, to initiate, to further? Who are the people around you, the men, specifically inside your family? What does that look like for you to pursue the harvest of the souls, the hearts of your family? And I'll give you, and I'll give you last, last, yep, last thing. And then, and then I'm going to talk conference for just a minute and, 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 uh, and because we've got we to fill those spots before we get out of here. But here's, here's, here's the thing I'll tell you. I'll give you three, three things when it comes to harvest and building relationships. And I don't know if I'm trusting the Holy Spirit will help you connect the dots on, this, on these things in terms of specifically what it looks like for you in your context, your relationships, your family, your situation this summer. But to, to pursue people, Listen, pursue people. I don't know if your wife, your kids, you, 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 you see the ones. Who's God put in your life? Three things are needed. Three things. Proximity, frequency, and intentionality. Proximity, frequency, and intentionality. Proximity, frequency, and intentionality. As men, we got to show up. We got to be present. We got to be dad. We got to be husband. We got to be in the game. We got to be aware. We can't be distracted. We can't be disconnected. We can't be shallow. We can't be grumpy, grumbling, frustrated. We can't neglect those relationships. How are you going to show up this summer? How are you going to step up? How are you going to lean in? How are you going to do that farming work in the relationships with those people this summer? It's going to take proximity. You got to be there. You got to be present. You got to show up. You, frequency. It's not just a one off, check the box. What does that look like? The rhythms, the rhythms, the rhythms. Proximity, frequency, and intentionality. And so my question for you this, this morning as we, as we prepare to launch out is just simply this What's your summer plan? Now, we're hitting the conference in two weeks. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be gas in the tank. July and August, right? The, the athlete book is coming out. You're going to have that. That's a tool, that's an option to utilize to continue to gather with men. If you're not connected with men in a stronger men group, you can still get connected to that. Talk to Pastor Chris this morning. But how many of you know you need to not disconnect and be distracted and disengaged and frustrated all summer long? That would be, come on, how many would agree? That would be lame, and it's totally possible. I have these conversations with myself and other men every year. We're going to come back in September. 0600, first Wednesday, September. Pastor Josh, we're going into an exciting fall Campaign, vision, be fruitful. Talk about farming, be fruitful. It's going to be an incredible fall. I'm encouraging you to be here. So put the first Wednesday on your calendar, September. Talk to the men in your life, in your circle. And we're going to, we're going to hit the gas. It's going to be an amazing year, balance the year. But what's your plan for the summer?